out. Let's now talk about other tools for mood and mental health that center around really what we more typically think of when we think of mood and mental health, which is emotions. The more specificity that we can put to labeling our emotions, the better off we're going to be in terms of our overall mental health. Let me restate that. The more specific language that we can put to our own internal emotions, even if that language is just to ourselves in our own internal narrative, we don't even have to speak out what those labels are, the better that we're going to feel over time. And indeed, this effect can be quite rapid. It's something that's referred to as emotional granularity. While some of us move through life with a sort of what I call emojification of emotions, you know, you got your happy face, happy, your sad face, sad, you know, you're angry, depressed, anxious. You know, those are labels for emotional states, or you could think of them as affects or emotions. I think of them as emotions, but they're not very specific. They're pretty broad bins. We say sad or depressed or super depressed or super sad, anxious, panic. You know, we think of that as nuanced, but it's not very nuanced. And people are asked to or encouraged to put more granularity, more specificity on what they're feeling then it seems that their levels of emotional processing are better overall. How does that translate to emotions? Well, it translates to better overall feelings of well-being when one is placing more specificity on positive emotions. And the flip side is also true. If one places more specificity on negative emotions, it also can enhance one's kind of experience of those negative emotions. There are two studies that I'd like to highlight that relate to this. The first is entitled Effective Self-Monitoring Through Experience Sampling on Emotion Differentiation in Depression. And the second study is entitled Emotional Granularity Increases with Intensive Ambulatory Assessment. Methodological and individual factors influence how much. Now, each of these studies focus on something slightly different. The first study was mainly focused on people who have depression and they were cued several, if not many times per day, to just think about and report on their emotional state. Second study was slightly different because it focused on non-depressed individuals and it cued them to touch into their emotions more times per day. And it also included some physiological measurements and one in particular that we're going to talk about in some detail. The key takeaways are very important for all of us to know, which are, first of all, the more often that you can ask yourself, you know, what am I really feeling right now? How do I feel? And, and this is so critical, the more that you force yourself to not use broad labels or simply valence labels, valence labels are good or okay or bad. And instead, understand that good is not an emotion. Okay is not an emotion. Bad is not an emotion. But rather saying, you know, I feel you know, curious, but a little anxious, if that happens to be the case. Or I feel bored, uh, but, you know, also a little bit in positive anticipation about what's going to happen tomorrow. Things of that sort. Putting more nuance and specificity on your emotions, but also touching into or thinking about your own emotional states more times per day clearly has positive outcomes for mood and mental health. Why would it be that putting more specificity on what we're feeling, so perhaps just in our own heads, like thinking, okay, how do I feel right now? Like if I were to do that right now, I'd say I feel energized and happy. I do. I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. You know, earlier today, I was feeling a little bit fatigued and a little bit confused because I was trying to sort out something and it wasn't making sense to me. Assessments like that, which can be told to somebody else or that we just hold internally, done repeatedly throughout the day, anywhere from three to six times throughout the day, just periodically pinging ourselves. Maybe you set an alarm or maybe you just decide to every once in a while and you don't have to write it down, although I suppose you could. It turns out that just that practice can really enhance our so-called emotional granularity that can enhance our positive emotions and affect. And in addition, it provides us a better sensitivity to better understand those negative emotions, which sounds like it might be a bad thing, but those negative emotions have information in them. Most of us, when we throw out the words depressed, angry, sad, we're not using enough nuance and it doesn't really apply to our internal states or the circumstances that we're in. And as a consequence, we suffer because the data say that the more nuance, the more emotional granularity that we have, The richer is our experience of the positive aspects of life and the more 
effectively we can navigate the negative aspects of life. Now, one of the most interesting things about this whole process of increasing emotional granularity and touching in several times per day into how we feel is that it correlates with improvements in physiological metrics that relate to overall improvements in mood and mental health. And the specific physiological metric that I'm referring to is so-called vagal tone. So it's a super highway of nerves out of the brain and into the body, and it's a super highway of nerves back from the bodily organs to the brain. And it's involved in regulating a lot of so-called autonomic functions. So how fast our heart rate is, or how fast our breathing is, rates of digestion. And all of that weaves together to create those things that we call affect, our internal states. So without going into a ton of detail about the vagus nerve, there's something that's called cardiac vagal control. Cardiac vagal control is the extent to which that vagus nerve can impact your heart rate and your overall feelings of calm or alertness. Now, the simple way to think about this is more commonly referred to as heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is simply the distance between your heartbeats, or rather the time between your heartbeats, which we know if those timings between your heartbeats are somewhat variable, that is correlated with positive physical and mental health outcomes. One of the ways that you can increase heart rate variability is to get regular cardiovascular exercise, as well as doing resistance exercise and no surprise, getting sufficient amounts of quality sleep each night is also going to be very beneficial for heart rate variability. It turns out that there's also a very rapid way to increase heart rate variability by activating the vagal innervation of the heart and the way that the heart and some other circuits within the so-called brainstem interact. And that's through something called respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Respiratory sinus arrhythmia can be summarized very simply by saying, when you inhale, you speed your heart rate up. And when you exhale, you slow your heart rate down. And it's that exhale slowing your heart rate down that's mediated by the vagus nerve. What does any of that have to do with the granularity of language that we place on our emotions? Well, it turns out there's several studies showing that when people place more descriptive granularity on their emotions, that is correlated with, okay? It's not causal, but it's correlated with improvements in respiratory sinus arrhythmia, which we know correlate with improvements in heart rate variability. Indeed, it's one of the major bases for heart rate variability, which we know is correlated with not just positive physical health outcomes, but positive mental health outcomes, including lower levels of anxiety, improved sleep, and overall levels of mood. There's a particular pattern of breathing that people can do for just five minutes per day that is effective in significantly improving various metrics related to mood and reducing anxiety and also improving sleep. But if you're wondering what this protocol is that people did for five minutes a day that allowed them to, by the way, pervasively improve their mood. So it wasn't just their mood while they were doing this five minute a day protocol. It was improvements in mood around the clock, essentially. We had people set aside five minutes per day. So set a timer for five minutes. They could sit or lie down. They could do it any time of day. And we just had them repeat that physiological sigh for a duration of five minutes total so that they would do two inhales through the nose and then a full exhale to lungs empty through the mouth. Then they would do it again and then they would do it again and again until those five minutes were completed. Again, the outcome of that clinical trial was that that particular pattern of breathing, which we called cyclic physiological sighing for five minutes per day, again, done any time of day, had the most positive outcomes in terms of improving mood and mental health and autonomic function, those things related to sleep and heart rate variability. And the fact that thinking about our emotions more frequently throughout the day and deliberately putting more label granularity on those emotions frequently throughout the day is correlated with this improvement in respiratory sinus arrhythmia and heart rate variability. The fact that these things all relate to one another should not surprise us because indeed there's a previous paper, this is a quite extensive review, the review published in 2017 in the journal Biological Psychology entitled Cardiac Vagal Control as a Marker of Emotion Regulation in Healthy Adults, a review. And this thing, vagal tone, our ability to 
kind of put the brakes on our autonomic nervous system and slow our heart rate down deliberately through our breathing. And perhaps even just by stopping and reflecting on what our emotional states are is really beneficial for our overall mood and mental health. And I want to highlight bold and underline that word overall, because it's not just the case that people experience elevated mood and mental health in the moments where they stop and go, oh, how am I feeling? Oh, you know, am I feeling you know, bored or agitated? Do I feel particularly excited? Sure, that can have some impact on physiological metrics and mood and mental health. But in all of these studies, the outcome seems to be that people's overall levels of mood and mental health are enhanced, not just while they're thinking about their emotions or doing this five minute a day cyclic sighing, but around the clock, which is really terrific because I think that's what most all of us want, which is improve mood and mental health, not just in the moments when we do a practice or in the few minutes afterwards, but 24 hours a day.